Hey, Juan Estasi from First Up This Now, checking in at the Houston St Texas State Championship here at 2714 Barbecue uh, from Dallas, Texas. I'm with Sydney, Kea, and Luis. We'll be talking about this amazing robot. They have uh, intake, climbing, very interesting climbing mechanism as well. And we'll get all that here on Behind the Bumpers. Your destination for first content, updates, and gaming. Welcome, Welcome to the fun. First Updates Now is supported by Kettering University. Kettering University hosts three co-op employment fairs each year for incoming and current students. Participating in the co-op employment process at Kettering is a great way to begin turning your robotics experience into a professional career to earn money towards graduating debt-free. If you are a senior, it's not too late to apply at kettering.edu slash apply. If you are planning on attending the World Championship, come meet others in the fun and FRC Discord community with our combined meetup on Friday, April 22nd at 11 a.m. local. Location will be announced closer to the event, and you can stay updated by following in either the fun or FRC Discord. So let's talk about your drivetrain. Sydney, will you be talking about that? So what made you guys choose this drivetrain? Did you do any iterations, I guess, in the drivetrain? Go from there. Yeah, so in the past, we've actually learned that we are really, really used to chain and tube drivetrains. It may be a little bit complicated to get that chain in there, but we are used to it. And at this point, we're really good at servicing it. So we decided to keep going with that this year. And we also have a custom gearbox with six Neos on it. Um, so it's very, very powerful, very, very strong, super fast. We don't get pushed around easily. And if we wanted to, we could always switch out the Omnis for more tractions and even get pushed around even less. Great, and now let's start with your cycle, your ball cycle. So let's head it over to Keo for the intake. What iterations have you made with your intake? Is this same intake from the beginning or what, what changes did you make? And if it's possible, we can also get a demonstration as well. Yeah, so from the start of the season, we wanted to go with kind of a four bar linkage just to make sure that, hey, if we need that compliance, we can get it. And to make sure that these balls always come in at the angles we wanted. So we experimented a little bit with active vectoring and stuff like that, but really decided that the best thing that we could go with was a, uh, was these compliant wheels because we got the right amount of compression. Um, the, at our first iteration, we had just two rollers, uh, and that wasn't enough. So we just decided to keep iterating on it, and I think we got up to we got up to about three or four before we decided we were happy with it and to roll with it. Okay. It's been super reliable for us, and we've had actually very few breaks, which is something that's been really nice. So let's get over to your indexing system. And if Luis will be talking about your indexing system. So what process does your, the cargos have to go through before it reaches the shooter? So first, uh, before the cargo can reach the shooter, it must be obviously pick, picked up by the intake. And then it drops down into the belly pan. And the serializer over here makes sure that the balls don't get stuck. Make sure that they get uh, pulled into the tower so that the tower is able to deliver it to the shooter. Um, we use two Neo 550s to power this mechanism. And it does a really good job of making sure that no balls ever get stuck and uh, like, you know, in a dead zone. And for, the, for your feeder system, uh, you have two Neo 550s. Are they running at the same speed? Is it at a different angle? How does that exactly work? They're, all, they're both running at the same speed at the same angle. Well, I mean, opposite because, you know, the mirrored. But <laughs> yeah, um, they're both running at the same speed with the same uh, gear ratios, which quickly pulls in the balls into the tower. So how do you avoid jamming once the ball gets into the, the robot, through the feeder system? Um, so these compliant wheels grab onto the cargo and make sure that um, it can't get stuck in the belly pan so the, uh, it doesn't stay there and it gets pushed into the tower. All right, so now let's, let's get right into the shooter. Uh, let's talk about how, uh, to Sydney, who would be talking about the shooter. So is, what compression and how do you make sure you guys score? Uh, you do the top hub, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, what compression does the balls, does the flywheel give to the balls, and how does your shooter work? Yeah, so we actually were testing that at the beginning of the season with prototyping. Um, we made a uh, quick and easy prototype out of laser cut um, plates, and we were using that to test the compression, like you were saying. We actually found out that the compliant wheels with expanding, um, we use about an inch of compression on the balls. And we also tested different angles with that. Uh, you know a lot of teams out there have um, variable hoods with diff multiple positions on it, but we actually decided that the RPMs of the shooter would be enough to um, 
change that angle of the shooter. And then from, at least from our last competition to here at States, we have found out that we actually needed more of an angle on that shooter so that we weren't making those huge high long shots, um, which is why we added these two 3D printed plates on the sides uh, to add the standoffs in the middle and it creates that perfect angle for us. And what do you use to adjust the RPM? How do you know that what RPM is perfect from whatever distance you are at? We do a lot of testing with that. We use our limelight uh, to align to it, and then we just use PID control to make sure that it's up to speed and correct. And once it is up to speed, that tower will immediately send it through, wait until it's up in speed again, which is super, super quick because of those compliant wheels having super fast spin up times. So, and second one goes in. What would you say is your sweet spot on the field? Where do you shoot from? Where would you like to shoot from more? I would say right at that tip of that tarmac. So not exactly at the line, but at the very, very point tip of it and take a circle around there. We also can do the launch pad shot, which is super nice, of course, with that safety angle, uh, not playing, not getting defense played on us. Uh, we also could theoretically do the fender, fender shot into the low goal as well, but we really like that outside of the tarmac. All right, and now let's head into the end game, which we will actually talk about the climber. And talk about how exactly your climber works. Uh, looks like you guys have stationary hooks, but I see there's a hidden hooks over here. So how exactly does it work? Yeah, so um, our, main, our main climbing mechanism to get the mid bar is uh, it's a modified version of our 2020 climb that, has just, that was super re reliable for us back then. Uh, we modified the hooks a little bit, messed around with a little bit of structural support and integration, and it's been super reliable for us. It's just entirely chain driven. Uh, no pneumatics on any on any of the climb or any of the robot, and so then once we're up on that mid bar, we uh, given given the new no pneumatics, we have a uh, a more motor driven mechanism for us that was this flip out bar. So we saw a lot of teams with like rotational, they would rotate their climb, rotate their robot, and there's a lot more complexity that goes into that, and it doesn't always hit 100%. You're relying on a lot of different angles, a lot of different like areas of failure, and so what we went with is this flip out bar which comes up and latches up onto here. And all we got to do is just raise this climb and we're onto the next bar. So in our climb sequence, uh, we, we, can, we can come in at like the last 10 seconds. It's a super really nice bonus that gets us that last minute climb. And so Jason, could you raise the climb? Jason, could you raise the, raise the climb up really quick? Raise the climb up really quick. And then we just, once we're on that mid bar, we come straight back down and just deploy these hooks right here. And it latches on, latches on, and holds us up. And so it's been, it's been great for us. Uh, it was a super simple implementation, and overall, it's just been super great. And we, we really enjoyed being able to get to the next, next bar. Well, that's 2714 Barbecue from Dallas, Texas, here at the state championship. Uh, you guys are doing really well. Amazing robot. Excited to see you guys go. Continue playing. Uh, you guys have one more match tomorrow. Uh, also, amazing tiny bumpers. Thank you so we'll much. mention. Tiny bumpers. And overall, great team. You guys are the tastiest team in Texas. So excited to see you guys continue on tomorrow, and good luck. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks to Kettering University for their support of this video. Kettering University hosts three co-op employment fairs each year for incoming and current students. Participating in the co-op employment process at Kettering is a great way to begin turning robotics experience into a professional career to earn money towards graduating debt-free. If you are a senior, it is not too late to apply at kettering.edu. apply Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.